Um, thank you for coming to this afternoon's meeting of the Northampton License Commission, Wednesday, May 15th. Um, present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, Commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers, and this meeting is being Zoom recorded. Do we have anybody here for public comment? If so, raise your Zoom hand. And I don't see any Zoom hands, so we'll jump right in. For agenda item number three, we have an application for an amendment to an existing entertainment license. This is Brewster Court Pub Incorporated, DBA Northampton Brewery, 11 Brewster Court. Proposed entertainment is bans on Brewster, Brewster Court, Monday through Saturday, 11 to 9 p.m. and Sundays noon to 8 from May 30th through August 29th. And I see we have Janet here. Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm well, how are you? Good. Good this to see is, everybody. It's exciting to see this happening again this year. It is exciting. We're yeah. we're thrilled. Um, I, we just love the the little parklet outside, and people seem to really love it. And uh, we're excited to do it again. Yep. Nice. Is anything changing this year compared to last year? No. The only reason why we're expanding the or a reason we're expanding the entertainment license or asking to is. Um, when we were talking to Brian, he said that spontaneous things might come up and we have that stage and that space and it just could happen. We don't actually have any plan to um, do anything with that expanded license yet. Okay. I'm all for spontaneous music happening on a stage downtown. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you guys have any questions or comments? No, just good to see it happening again. That's great. Yeah, wonderful. No here. Thank you. Thank right. you. Is there a motion then? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, approve the amendment to an existing entertainment license for Brewster Court Pub as detailed in item three on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. And application for temporary outdoor dining extension of premises into public spaces. This is for Brewster Court Pub Incorporated, DBA Northampton Brewery, 11 Brewster Court for 1500 square foot area on Brewster Court. Is that bigger than you did last year or is it the same? Same. I have no questions. Does anybody else have questions or comments? No. Then we're ready for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Brewster Court Pub, Inc. DBA, Northampton Brewery is shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include approximately 1,500 square feet of space on Brewster Court, cordoned off with planters and fencing through November 15th, 2024. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming, Janet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Item number five, application for an automatic amusement device license for Mochinut LLC, DBA Mochinut 96 Main Street. This is for a prize crane claw machine. And do we have, hello. I see our, our claw machine person. He is not connected to audio. Oh. Can't unmute him. Um... Is he still in the in the room? He's he's here, um, just not connected to audio. Uh, maybe we could. Well, his items are number five and six, so yep. maybe we go to seven. Okay. Item seven, we have an application for short-term liquor license for the Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park, DBA Garden House, 300 North Main Street in Florence, Saturday, June 8th, 12 to 3. This would be at the meadow and the patio behind the garden house on the lower level for the summer caravan and a wine and malt license is being sought. Right. And, hello. Hi. How are you? Doing good. Good. And can you just let us know your name? I don't think we've met you before. Yeah, it's, I know. I need to... Uh, edit my Zoom name, apparently. Uh, it's Mark, Mark Penny. I'm the operations director at the park. Oh, great, great. Thank you for coming. Sure. Um, 
Do you, I don't think you guys have done this event before. No, this is a new event uh, as partnership. The Springfield Thunderbirds wanted to make us the first stop on their summer caravan uh, community event they launched last year. So we're excited to be part of this. So we wanted to have uh, a small craft beer and wine bar behind the garden house down where this event's going to take place in the behind the visitor center parking lot and on that meadow area behind Good. the garden house. So there's going to be um, there's a paved patio section behind there that. Uh, we're going to uh, cordon off an area. Sounds great. And mm -hmm. um, will food be served? We're hoping, though, no, this came to fruition just uh, early last week. So apparently every food truck in the Valley is previously booked that day. So I'm also applying for a vendor license so we can uh, grill our own food, possibly. Still waiting to hear back from a couple food trucks. But the hope is that food will be served. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, any questions from Helen and Jennifer? I don't have any questions now. Yep, no questions here. Okay. Did you want to add anything else, Mark? No, I just wanted to get a quite a full understanding. Uh, we were planning to snow fence the area. I just wanted to make sure that that's 100% the requirement, or could other barricades be used? Or uh, we're looking to get a, a band perform on the field as well. So I just wanted to 100% uh, understand the, the barricade, the coordinate right. area. So, Annie, since this is, I mean, when we've done stuff at the park before and people have used barricades, it's not on the, um, it's not at the garden house. It's when stuff is in the field mm -hmm. and in an open space. So I'm not sure that that would be required for this. Annie, would, can you weigh in on that? If you think uh, uh, I don't, um, typically when think when things do happen in the field, it is cordoned off or there's a specific area under a tent or, Otherwise, that right, but is, this isn't the field. This is right behind the garden house. Yeah, it's a small meadow that we wanted to um, have at least a, a small portion of it for alcohol and weather. We didn't know. If, uh, well, we can use snow fencing, but it's no, not the no. It's a bit of an eyesore. But we didn't know if we could if if lawn signs spaced apart that says no alcohol beyond this point would be sufficient. So will people be going in and out of the garden house itself or? It's oh, no, no, not at all. That No public no access stuff. there. The bar will kind of be up against the back wall in the corner. OK. Uh, so that patio area referenced is back there below. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's a paper stone oh. area off the, right off the back. I mean, when I'm envisioning, I, I actually just noticed it driving by the other day. Yeah. The, meadow area and kind of where the hockey rink was where I put exactly. the hockey rink this yeah, up yeah. last winter. Yep. So yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So to me, it looks like a contained space as it is. It is. It's defined for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I would be satisfied with with signage just saying no alcohol beyond this point. Sounds great. Yeah. Yep. No fencing so ugly. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we'll get some better fencing down the road, something less of a yeah. nice door, but um, yep. that would be yep. wonderful. Yep. And as long as your servers are tip certified and all of that. Yes. Yeah, I have two lined up. Mm -hmm. OK, um, Helen and Jennifer, are you in agreement with that? Yeah, I have no problem with that. I think that's a good plan. Yeah, I'm comfortable. OK, great. Then I think we're ready for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the short term liquor license for Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park as detailed in item seven of the agenda. Second. Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. And it okay. looks like Eric is connected to audio. If you want to go back. Yeah, we'll go back to Eric real quick. Hey folks. Sorry for the hey. delay. Was That's having okay. some con connectivity issues. They wanted me to download the updated version of Zoom. So uh, my we apologies. All Fellow commissioners, we all better do that after this meeting if we haven't yet, because I know I haven't. Um, okay, so we'll go to items five and six. We have an application for an automatic amusement device, Mochi Nut LLC, DBA Mochi Nut 96 Main Street, and an application for an automatic amusement device license for the general cleaners at 144 North King Street. And these are both prize crane claw machines. Correct, yeah. Similar to what I installed in Florence Laundry when we met a couple months ago at this meeting. Um, same machines, um, same owner for um, General Cleaners and Florence Laundry, doing really well there. So he's interested in placing one at that location as well. And uh, Mochi Nut really fits the the key demographic we like with a lot of the prizes we have in the machine. So they were excited to see one and okay. uh, looking to get one installed. Great. Um, Helen and Jennifer, any questions or comments for Eric? No. 
No, we haven't had any problems at the other machines, so no. Nope. Nope. You're yeah. filling up town. I know. I was going to say, you're going to be in there. Right. Doing our best. We're doing our best. <laughs> From none to some. <laughs> yeah. um, then I think we're ready for a motion for both agenda items okay. five and seven. We uh, probably have to do it individually, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion then to approve the application for an automatic amusement device license for Mochi Nut at uh, 96 Main Street for one prize crane claw machine. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, then I'll make a motion to approve the application for an automatic amusement device license for general cleaners at 144 North King Street for one prize crane claw machine. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thanks for coming, Eric. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Take care. You too. Item number nine, we have an application for short-term liquor license for the beer guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Item number eight, application for short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewery at 320 Riverside Drive in Florence, June 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. for the Arrive at 5 event, and it is a wine and malt license sought. And we have O'Brien. Hi. Hello. How are you? I am good. Um, June 6th, That's a, is that a Wednesday? I'm sorry. I thought it was the 5th. Oh, you know what? You're right. It is the one. Uh, it should be the fifth. Okay. When we do the motion, we'll have that corrected. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know if I did that or nope. all the new computer no stuff is. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. So this is the monthly um, Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Month. And uh, the, the Cambium Analytica is a bonded facility. So they actually can't have people on their premise. So. <laughs> It's kind of a de facto sort of location with bathrooms and stuff. So yeah, so people will just come from there to you. Yeah, they'll be here. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, okay. I think. and then uh, yeah, they're, I don't even think they can go inside over there. And I think they're serving food. Okay. Yeah. Great, and it'll be your, your usual setup like you did for um. Yeah. May fourth. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I have no questions, Helen and Jennifer. No questions for me. Um, I'm actually over here at the brewery because the Iron Horse is picking up their first order. Oh, nice. Yeah, waiting for them to come. So exciting. That's Sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. That's, that, yeah, that just to change the location. So yeah, good no to see problem. that moving forward. And you mentioned there will be food, O'Brien, just in the um, the other place? Yes. They're, they're, I guess they're having it catered or, yeah, I'm not doing anything, but it's all their, their foot in the bill. So um, I'm not sure about weather and stuff and all that uh, as far as if it's going to be inside here, if we're going to put something in the front with a tent for it, or they didn't fill me in too much. But that was their original plan was to have it have food as well. Got it. Because I you. asked, you know, I like to have people at least get some. Yep. Yep. So. Great. Thank you. That was my only question. Yeah. All right. I think we're ready for a motion. All right, and I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive, Florence, on June 5th, 2024, from 5 to 8 p.m. for the Arrive at 5 event. Yep, second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thanks, O'Brien. All right, thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Number nine, application for short-term liquor license for the Beer Guy LLC, DBA The Beer Guy, Friday, June 7th, 10 to 3 p.m. for a wedding at the Dowd Pavilion at Look Park, 300 Main Street in Florence. And this is a wine and malt license being sought. Do we have the Beer Guy? Um, my guess is it's the iPad Pro, so I'm going to give it a whirl. Okay. That's me. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well. Um, can you let us know your name since I'm pretty sure you're not the beer guy, actually? I'm, I'm David Capriati. Great, thank you for coming. Have you been here before? Yes, I have. Okay, yeah, I, I went to your website earlier today and I thought, I, I think I've seen this thing before. Yeah, I, I've dealt with uh, Annie before. I've done I've done stuff at Look Park before. I've done the uh, benefit race that they've done there. I've done other wedding. I've done other weddings at Look Park, so I, I I know how they're they're particular on their setups and stuff. Yeah. So, 
at that. So I, I did submit all my insurance, my tips and everything with them. So yep, we, have, we have it all. Yeah, um, I'm usually I'm usually pretty thorough. I've, I've been in business for a long time, so I, I cover all my bases. Right. Um, I don't have any questions since we've been through this. Do um, other commissioners have any questions or comments? No, I don't. No, no, no questions. All right, then we're ready for a motion. All right, uh, make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for wine and malt for the Beer Guy LLC as detailed in item nine on the uh, agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Helen? Yes. And, <laughs> sorry, and Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. And does that go to my, would that be emailed to me? Is that how I get that? Yeah, I, yeah, I'll go through your um, application tomorrow morning and something will be sent to you. Okay, that's great because I'll turn because I have to turn a copy over it to uh, Lisa for the people with the wedding as well. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much. You guys have a nice day. Great. You too. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. Item number ten: application for short-term liquor license for the Northampton Jazz Festival, Thursday, June thirteenth, from six to six forty-five. This is a jazz film night at thirty-three Holly Street, and a wine and malt license is being sought. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you, Ruth? Good. Yeah, we're having another jazz film night um, at the Northampton Center for the Arts, and we like to have a wine and cheese reception from 6 to 6.45 before the film just to be hospitable. So that's what we are looking for. Nice. That sounds great. Um, we've been approving a lot of things for Holly Street, so we're familiar with how they set things up, and I don't have any questions for you. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer? No questions. No questions. All right. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, sorry, before you do that, I do oh. not have liquor oh, liability. Right. That's right. It's in process with Whalen Insurance. Excellent. So okay. we know that we have to have that to you, um, obviously, well before the 13th. Okay. Um, Helen, can you just make it contingent on that? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the short term liquor license for the Northampton Jazz Festival. As detailed in item 10 on the agenda, um, contingent upon receiving the liquor liability insurance. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Ruth. Thank you very much. You take, take care. Bye-bye. Item 11, application for a short-term liquor license for the Glasgow Land Scottish Festival, Saturday, July 20th from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. for the Glasgow Land Scottish Festival at Look Park, 300 Main Street in Florence. And this is an all alcohol license. And hello, Peter. Oh, we can't. Uh, oh, there you are. Good, can yes. you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, good afternoon. How are you? Good, good. Welcome. I'm well, I'm back again. <laughs> You're back again. Yes. Another year of this great event. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I remember I think it was last year you started a tasting tent or the year before. We did. We have yep. I think it was for the last two years. We've had whiskey tasting. Um and last year it was at the garden house and um inside and uh it worked out very well. And uh we have um, that's re actually run by the um, the Four Seasons uh, and uh, uh, and the um, the supplier Impex, um, and uh, the person who's serving is uh, Jay Cole, known as the Whiskey Pirate, yes. and uh, so <laughs> he's so it's been very successful. Yeah, no, it's how many years now has the event been going on? Twenty nine. Twenty nine years, and I don't think there's ever been, at least in the all the years I've been around license commission, we've there's never been any complaints or issues. No, we haven't been at Look Park for twenty nine years. We've been there um, twenty or something like that. I can't remember, yeah. but Long no, time. we've never we've zero had no issues ever. Yep. Yep. Not yep. Way. Well, that's great. You run a really nice event. Thank you. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we move to? A motion right we have the we have the celtic pub at uh on the field I okay think that, and uh i do have a question um we we always have had it uh snow fencing as 
that Mark Penny was mentioning before that snow fencing we use theirs. Um, is that a requirement for the liquor commission? I think it's a for if you're on the open fields, I believe it's a preference. It's not a it's not a firm requirement, but it's the way we've always had things on that section yeah. do it. Um, do the other commissioners want to add anything to that? I don't, we don't have an issue with having okay. it up. Just, yeah. Uh, and uh, we do have yeah. signs, you know. Oh, but I don't think there's a restriction of, is there, oh, here's another, is there a restriction of people taking beer onto the rest of the park? I don't think that it's a park. A very good question. So my assumption has always been when we do these events, when people set up in the field in that area, um, well, actually, no, this is not true. I was going to say the, the people stay in, but when the cycle cross event, I see people walking around with beers. So, well, it's a good, it's a good time to, that you asked this question. Um, people do leave the, the cordoned off area. And that's probably something that we should talk about, uh, Helen and Jennifer, just to be consistent moving forward with these events, because I know at cycle cross, the beer does walk. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new brand, walking beer. Walking beer, cycling beer. Um, and I don't, and uh, I we've don't think. Always, we've always safe. restricted it, but if it's not a, a requirement, then it is, you know, it's not a, it wouldn't be a bad thing for us. We, you know, we got to do what you want us to right. do. Right. Um, what do you guys think, Helen and Jennifer? This is this is a, a good question. I mean, so is it are you just saying in that event that's sort of how it's just transpired that people go out of the fenced in area? At Cycle Cross, yes. Okay. People okay. have gone out of the beer area. Um and it the way they have it set up at Cycle Cross is they have whoever's serving the beer and they're sort of surrounded by food trucks. So it's like it's this little corral. Mm -hmm. Um there is some of the snow fencing, but it's more like a food court almost so There's, but is the fencing just around the um the beer service area or it's like around the, like the food truck sort of like it that is wall? it is around the beer area but it's not enclosed like what the folks for this festival do mm -hmm. uh yeah, I don't know. Is it a slippery slope? I mean, is there like if someone's like served beer in that section of the park and then they end up over by the pond or whatever with the beer, then, I'm, you know, I mean. Right. Well, I think whatever we decide, I just want to be consistent. So when it comes time for cycle cross that we we're applying the same thing because, it, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same same concept. Like people yeah. are walking around with beer and the whole idea is to keep the alcohol, keep people safe and keep the alcohol out of the hands of, of young people who yeah. aren't aged. Um, um we we do rent the whole park for the yes, day you do. i understand but when look park did their new event in october they, do you remember they did some kind of an, a haunted train or something and they had an alcohol license and they used the snow fencing so i am concerned that we're approving some events at look yep. park like and and restricting with the fencing and not others so um did did they set up for the train event in the field? Do you recall? The fencing was sort of on a hill in a, yes, it wasn't like a naturally defined, it wasn't yep. what Mark described today. Yeah. My preference in this open space, if we're not immediately adjacent to the garden house is to have the snow fencing and then moving forward, in November when the cycle cross people come for their license, that would be required of them as well. That would, that would be my preference just to prevent any, um, you know, I want your 29th street, 29 year streak to continue. Exactly. <laughs> well, so do we. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it's not, if it's what you've been doing, it doesn't sound like it'll be an additional burden this year. It would be a nice to not have to, but um, okay, great. So we'll just make a mental note as commissioners that, come October when we see cycle cross on November. We will yeah, that sounds good. Do okay. the same. Yep. Okay. Very good then. I think we're ready for a motion. Okay. I will right. we'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for the Glasgow Land Scottish Festival as detailed in item 11 on the agenda. Second. Natasha. 
Yes. Ellen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you so much for coming again, Peter. Thank you. We'll see you there, hopefully. Yes. Bye-bye. Yes. <laughs> see ya. Hopefully no rain. No, okay, don't even talk about that. No. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, I even brought it up. Um, we'll strike it from the record. <laughs> Item number 12, application for a transfer of a class one auto dealer license, transferring from Valley Motorsports Incorporated 216 North King Street to Moms Northampton LL 216 North King Street. Hi. Hello. Last but not least, <laughs> we never get to do car stuff. <laughs> Sorry, what? We never get to do car stuff. Uh, well, this is motorcycle, so even more exciting. This is even more <laughs> awesome. So uh, I worked for my parents for Valley Motorsports, was owned for 50 years. I've worked there 25 years, and now I'm working for moms. Um, we sold the business. We tried to sell it officially two years ago, but it's taken this long to get all the the franchises passed over to us and getting new dealer numbers and all that, but we're finally ready to take the next step and let my parents retire. Nice. <laughs> That's great. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Um, any questions from Jennifer or Helen? No, nope. I see all the documents are submitted, so I don't have any questions. All right. No questions um, here. And I think we're ready for a motion. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of a class one auto dealer license as detailed in item 12 on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, Heidi. Congratulations to your parents. Thank you very much. Yes, Have good a good day. Bye-bye. All right, uh, 13, discuss protocol for special meetings. So I asked Annie to put this on the agenda because we've been really, well, first, my work schedule is very flexible. So it's very easy for me to say yes, but I don't always say yes right away, which Annie will know from our text exchanges. <laughs> but um, I, I, I would like to develop some standards out of respect for everybody's time. And there are certainly issues that have come up, for example, um, having a special meeting to get the restaurants approved for service outside. I think we can all agree that that is a bona fide um, reason to call a special meeting. It's really important for the restaurants. I don't want them to have to wait around to not make money just because we don't aren't willing to, to have that kind of flexibility. And I think that's something that we all agree um, that we're willing to do. The other special meeting requests are, are a little bit harder. And you know, we had the International Language Institute this last time that we were able to couple with that um, meeting for the restaurants, but the onus is also on the applicant to have an understanding you know, of their calendar and of the requirements for us in terms of getting paperwork in and when we're having meetings. Um, so I just wanted to have a discussion about that to see how you guys feel about the special meetings uh, is there specific protocols that you would like to see put in place so that moving forward, we we have an immediate answer if not, you know, sorry, we don't do that. I don't want to assume you're available. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, how would we put it? I mean, do you have a proposal for sort of how we put it in writing besides, oh, it's on a case-by-case -case basis, whether we think it's <laughs> valid. Well, I mean, it is, so it could be a case-by-case -case basis. If if you if you are willing to do that, mm -hmm. um, or it could be, you know, please, uh, you know, it, check the calendars, and it's it's at the discretion of the. I mean, it's always at the discretion of the commission. Right. And I don't think like we're going to put something on the website that says no, no special meetings. I just really wanted to touch base with you guys about it because I don't want to make any assumptions. Yeah. And also we only need two of us for special meetings. Right. And by the way, I appreciate that you took on that. Uh, <laughs> that well, um, that was a big meeting, Helen. That was a big. That no, was... I know. And I, and I was like, oh, Jennifer's going to have to read these things. I, I, know, I know exactly what it's like. <laughs> so, um, yes. So I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I just think as a commissioner, and, and this is just my personal experience, um, it, it 
I found this month to be really confusing, right? Because we kind of juggle the date of the special meeting, uh, the special hearing. And then I, at, at one point, bumped off today's meeting saying, oh, no, we, we changed it. You know, so it's a lot to juggle. Yeah. I and, did the same thing for somehow I deleted this meeting off of my calendar. And I'm like, wait, why did I do um, that? Exactly. Oh, okay. And so I'm afraid going forward that one of those little hiccups would become a big and then really be time sensitive and, and then a scramble. So I'm yep. just um, becoming a little more protective of our um, original meeting dates. And, yes. and that if there's some way. And I. I hate speaking without having an answer. I don't have a solution. I'm just sharing that I crossed off today's meeting. Yep. You know, because of all the discussions for special. Uh, yeah. Special. Well, I mean, it's it's helpful to know your thresholds for, you know, tolerating a last minute request because somebody has an event next week. You know, those types of things I I I get frustrated by because this is largely a thankless thing that we do. <laughs> and it's you know, it involves Annie having to take time out, out of her busy work day and all of us sort of get to a place where we can have a meeting or at least two of us to do that. I just, I'm someone who, I just don't want to be a jerk about things. Yeah. Um, so my, my first inclination is to be like, okay, let's, okay. But at the same time, it's not okay. Like people should understand. They should look at the calendar and see, okay, the meeting is on X date or, or, oh gosh, I screwed up. We're going to have to delay our thing, yeah. change our own date. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know where the language goes, but I mean, um, you know, but basically making it clear that there's no expectation that the commissioners are going to hold a special meeting if it's something that, you know, basically is your own fault for, for missing a deadline, unless it's something that was beyond your control. Potentially, if it was something right. that was beyond your control, um, you know. Uh, so are you guys comfortable? consideration. I mean, I know, I think ultimately it's my discretion. So if Annie asked, can we have a special or somebody asked for a special meeting and I just say no, end of story. Are you okay with that? <laughs> Do it. Oh, wow. That's rocking. That's a, yeah, that's hardcore. Um, <laughs> with the planning commission Not that I it? want to. You know what I mean? I can't imagine going to another commission, missing a deadline and expecting accommodation. Right. It's yeah. true. I mean, zoning, all those commissions, right. you can't, Yeah. That's a very good point. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense for the one-off things. Obviously, then there's the, you know, we will consider things like we had to for those restaurants. Um, and that was a timing issue that was beyond their control. Yep. Um, and impacted multiple folks. Right. Uh, yeah, that was that was just more of a, a separate thing. Yeah. You know, and I think back to years past, like before I joined the license commission, I don't, I don't know if they did special meetings whenever somebody missed a deadline. They probably yeah. didn't. I'm trying to think back to the ones that we've, the f things that we've accommodated uh, with the special meetings, because yeah, we have had quite a few, and I've quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with you bringing down the hammer. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> for us. All right. If Jennifer is. Okay. All right. Because I, mean, I like honest, uh, like it's often like I will only, my my schedule will only allow me probably to do it like on a Monday morning or Monday late afternoon. And I can't remember. And there was some reason I couldn't do, you know, and then typically every other day is booked for me. Yep. Um, so. Okay. And Jennifer, I appreciate you saying other commissions don't accommodate special meetings necessarily well, if I'm wrong please let me know but in my experience you know I've never applied for a permit somebody say oh hey we'll just do this special thing for you you know you, you get in queue and wait and right they they do other commissions do have special meetings but I don't know the circumstances behind why mm -hmm. but I see on the calendar all the time like special meeting for whatever board or committee yeah. I just don't know the reasoning behind it. Right. Okay. We'll blaze our own trail here. Um, might I suggest yep. that people who have done this year after year, like the International Language Institute for Giving Voice, they've ha they do it every year. So they should know that there's a deadline and they should be checking ahead of time. Yep. Uh, others 
who were maybe new to the scene and had no idea and their unforeseen circumstances might be given a little bit of leniency. I don't know. But but the people that come every year, get a license every year, there should be no excuse as to why they don't, they aren't on the agenda that they need to be on. It's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and I remember having that, I can't remember which of the many special meetings we've had, but there were, you know, we sort of made that statement like, you're lucky today because we happen to be having this special meeting for something else. So we're throwing it in there, but don't expect us in the future. So, yeah. yeah. So essentially what you're saying is it'll be, if it comes up, it'll be a discussion between you and Annie and you might just make a decision on it and we won't yeah. even hear about it, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's, I'm good with that. Well, and okay. with the Scottish festival, I mean, that's over two months away and they don't have all the paperwork and that's still approved and moved along. So, I mean, folks are able to schedule things. I understand not everybody has like a yearly uh, annual tradition like that event, but mm -hmm. just putting out the reminder that things can mm -hmm. be scheduled in advance. You don't have to cut it. Yep. Okay. So yep. if we do bring something to you asking for a special meeting, then it will be a uh, something you're already aware of needs attention or a circumstance that Annie and I figured was unavoidable for the applicant. Okay, great. I'm comfortable with that, yep. Okay. Item 14, clerk updates business. We have a Bombic sound mitigation update and reschedule of August meeting. Yeah, so um, the Bombix, um people, Cassandra and her um, facilities manager came in and met with all of our like fire building, um, health, mayor's office. And I just found the, the, the sound mitigation stuff that they've been doing, I found um, helpful and I figured I sh should share it with you. That would be um, so let's see, um, they reported that they're finalizing their next round of installation with insulation with mass save, which is targeted at insulating the sanctuary floor and ducts. Right now, the sound goes into the basement and out the basement windows. Um, so that's part of um, the sound leakage out of the building. Um, so that will help with um, sound transmission. They also discovered a huge cavity in one of the walls. So the sound was going into this vent and bellowing into the walls and made the walls shake. Mm -hmm. um, so they blocked that off and spray foamed the entire vent. They did a decibel test before and after, and it had decreased by 10 decibels. Um, and they haven't even done their windows yet, um, which is gonna further mitigate the sound. And they are also adding some panels and curtains, like thick curtains to the sanctuary as well to help with further sound mitigation. So it sounded all positive, hoping for the best. I will say that when I attend things there, I always think they could turn it down a little, you know, I, and I'm like, am I getting old? I mean, I feel, I look park too. I'm like, what is happening? It's this new thing where it's like, they just blast it almost to the level of distortion. Hmm. I'm not a sound expert, but just as someone witnessing it, I'm like, I, I would like to hear the, the lyrics. You know? yeah. <laughs> so it's just a funny thing. And I know that I've heard like sometimes like, you know, before, things they'll say hey it might get kind of loud so you might want earplugs it's like well why don't you just earplugs or, or whatever or just like be be aware that it's going to be loud and it's like well make it not so loud they yeah. do have total control over the yeah. volume of what's being amplified right just... choices have been made yeah based so. on what the artist i mean kyle i think kyle actually said some of the musicians are divas or something like that, or, but they still have, they're the host. They still have total control over that. And mm -hmm. I'm really happy to hear that they're, that they're making um, headway in terms of sound mitigation via insulating the building. It's, and I hope that that has a positive impact on the neighbors because technically, I mean, it's just good, but this is a good update. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I didn't. I mean, it, you need to tell your guests to bring earplugs. <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah, there was something, I don't know, that they almost like did a, and this was maybe last year where they did sort of a pre-warning before the show, like, hey, it's, it could be pretty loud. Wow. <laughs> you already know that in advance. 
And you haven't had any, I mean, you would have shared with us if you'd heard from any neighbors, I assume. I have not heard from any neighbors. Yeah. Right. Hmm. I did notice um, they've started putting signs at the driveways, the big yellow signs saying do not block driveway, which I'm sure has been very helpful. And even though they have that extra lot, there was one show, people were parked all the way down the hill for my Florence neighbors here, um, the hill down to Nonatuck Street mm -hmm. from Maple, which is like, you put cars park there and then it's basically a one lane road. So I was very surprised to see that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. do we know if they started their outdoor show shows? Um, they don't have a license for them. But what did they submit to us? Because, yeah, I'm kind of waiting for that shoe to drop because the plans that they submitted showed, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of people outdoors. I was just concerned. Well, we, if, if my memory serves, we declined to issue entertainment for outside of the sanctuary. Or did we just limit the number of? Now I've totally lost track. I know we had a huge, there was a huge discussion at first. They had like a really large number and then we dropped it to like five. Yeah. And then when things got really complicated with um, other departments in the city needing to be involved, I think we said none because they were doing all this stuff at once. Right. Like, right. Andy okay. looks dubious. Uh, I'm just looking at my I'm with Annie yeah. sharing that there are no complaints, but I just remembered the site map and I was like, oh, getting nervous. But uh, yeah, okay. no, I'm glad you brought it up. I do, yeah, I do not remember what happened with the license. Um, I remember then there being this discussion about, oh, we can't bring our church service outside. And, and oh, yeah, that. so and, I and found a letter that I. I was sent them June 13th, 2023. The commission voted to modify the entertainment license to limit outdoor events to six per year and to amend the entertainment hours to be conducted Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sundays from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then, then, then we have the discussion, what is an outdoor event? Does that is that a wedding? Is that a bar mitzvah? Is that a concert? Well, if it's private, then it doesn't, like if it's a wedding or a bar mitzvah, it doesn't count in one of the six because those are private and the entertainment license doesn't apply. Right. You know what, now I am remembering, I think it was last summer, they did have an outdoor thing. They had a brass band or something. Yeah, yeah. I, and that's when I, all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose. I had people sending me messages on Facebook. I'm like, hi, we've never met. <laughs> I don't know what I can do to help you in this moment. Oh, all right. But that is very good. Good news. That is good news. I'm grateful. Thank you for sharing, Annie. Yeah. Can you update can. us on where so where they are in terms of their work with the building department because that will determine it's a bit up to the building department to tell them they if they can have beer and wine again right right um they are supposed to be providing a basically a master list of everything they want to do all their hopes and dreams and wishes um within the next few days and then we're meeting we're all meeting again mid-june to respond to that to tell them what they can do what they won't be able to do and what they need to do in order to do, do those things. Want. Yeah. And so that's, so did they put in a sprinkler system or, or that would um, be? It, uh, there is a building permit pulled for a sprinkler system that is being put in. That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I thought it was contingent on the sprinkler system. I thought that was the main uh barrier to allowing wine and yeah well they don't well they don't have wine right now right I, right right and i thought i thought it was because of the sprinkler system that, yes that the primary situation yeah yes okay. and so the process when 
that is in place, whatever's required in order for them to have beer and wine, the building department will say, okay, this is fine. Is it going to come back through us formally, or will we just wait until we get a short-term application? Um, we'll either get a short-term application or if they apply for a wine and malt license. Okay. I'll got it. Okay. She alluded to maybe that she does want to do that. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Anything else on Bombix? Nope. Okay. Um, reschedule August meeting. Yes, I will not be here um, for the August meeting. It'd be great well, for you to be at the meeting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my, I guess my, we could try and skip August. Whoa. I am fine with all. skipping August because with the exception of one event, it is our quietest agenda of the year. Um, I, I would want like start this process now, get a message to, yeah. um, I forget his name, the guy at the free County fair oh. and tell them we will not be having an August meeting this year. And the this is who is this now? Is this the um this is the one who last year sent that nasty email and CC'd senators, state reps, oh, yeah. dozens of people accusing us of abdicating our responsibilities and not working enough on the busiest month of event time. And it's not, it's just his event. And I respect that. I want to get them all set. I want them to have what they need, but they need to know now that because they also were ones in the past who've been like latecomers with applications. And I know that it's not, you know, um, one of the, I don't know if it was Mineral Hills or one of the other wine people said, you know, they submit the application, but then it can take time on the state end. Yeah. But if they know that there is no August meeting because there is no clerk available. And um, now that you bring it up, I am also not available <laughs> the second or third Wednesday of the month for August. Okay. So I will let them know um, in the event that there is something that can't, we didn't foresee or can't wait. Can we, would we, I guess we could cross that bridge when we come to it. You froze in the middle of your sentence. Oh, I just worry that just in the event that there is something that we did not foresee coming forward. Um, would we be able to hold a special meeting? Not n not relating to the people for the three county fair. I guess, I guess it just depends on the situation if something comes forward since we are canceling the August meeting. Sorry, everybody froze. Yeah, the, I'm like, is it me? Because I'm <laughs> moving and all of you froze and I guess everyone's having that. So that's yeah. yeah. Annie, are you asking us to call a special meeting if something comes up? Yeah. Essentially, if something that we couldn't foresee coming forward comes up, yeah, can we hold a special meeting? And I guess, I guess we can deal with that if it right. comes. Cross that bridge. Yes. Um, so consider the August meeting canceled. Yep. And can we? I mean, I, I, I guess I don't know if it's kosher, but the, you know, this issue of like that we can approve things contingent upon. I mean, is that almost something you could give as like a secret message to those folks planning the three Ganny Fair saying, you can come forward in July with everything that you have and say, these are the things you need and we can approve it contingent upon you getting all those things. Or is that not, I mean, is that accurate that even if we don't then have a meeting in August that once they have those things, it can automatically be approved? Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I wouldn't want to offer that up at- Yeah. yeah. Um, and if I give them notice now, there shouldn't need to be a contingency. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would tell them that there is not going to be an August meeting. Just be firm about it. Yeah. Okay. We are being European this year and we are all away. Right. <laughs> Nothing happens in August. Yeah. We're, all, we're all away the whole month. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yep. And I don't, do you think it's overkill or not our responsibility, but maybe sending a letter, not just to the, um, I wish I could remember his name, the director, but his, the, the last group of people who did the expo 
so that all of them get it at the same time? Uh, who? who? <laughs> so, all, so the the issue was the the wineries, the the people serving at the expo that he has. Oh, at the, oh, three county, the fair. three county fair. Yeah, right. Sorry, yeah, three county fair. Okay. So rather than just rely on the director to communicate to the purveyors, actually oh. send a letter to everybody who had a license last year. Okay, yeah, that's who I figured I would be sending them. Oh, to. okay, great. It, Jamie from the three county fair, the general manager, is he the one that sent that letter? Yes, he is. Oh, well, he's yeah. gone. Oh. Um, he left recently, so he is no longer the general manager. So I will I will send it to the people that I've been communicating with because they're actually changing their liquor license right now. And I will send it to each individual winery. Perfect. That's even more important now, though, with the change. Yeah, we want to get that word out. Yep. Yeah, I will do that. All right. And then I just have a question I don't know. It bothers me every time. I don't. Would you, you all prefer if I called you commissioner and then your last name instead of your first name? Oh, when we approve things, you mean? Or... Yeah, or whenever I address you in a meeting. What What is your preference? I don't have one. I am fine with first name, and I do it too. So I feel like if you started doing it, then I'd have to start doing it. And that would be an adjustment. Sometimes you know, Sasha says like, is there any other um, comment from commissioner? I guess you don't usually say. No, you just say from the other commissioner. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. And I just so, feel like I don't want to, <laughs> I just want to be respectful and lend the gravitas to you that you deserve because I don't know. I... The only reason I do that is so it's clear to the person, the applicant, that I'm not asking them if they have anything else to say. I see. Okay. So I well, just, yeah. If you want to think about it and let me know or tell me separately <laughs> or I don't, whatever you want, I will do. I just wanted to ask you. So then we would have to call you Clerk Lesko. I was just going to say that. Yeah. No, you do not. <laughs> yeah, queen. So. Now you could just call her Queen. Yes. Queen. <laughs> no, you do not need to cut. No. Well, anyways, it's out there. If you want to send me a message and tell me yes, you would whatever. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. I'm fine with however I am I'm better with not doing it personally. If if yeah. we had a choice, I'd say let's keep okay. on how we're doing because that, that allows me to just call everyone by first name. Right. But, Okay. Yeah, if there's Fair. someone quietly I just, I just stewing about people it. appearing before us are kind and um and respectful, so I don't feel that there's a behavior that we need to rein in. I don't know if that would help if there were, but I I do want to say on record that people are very, uh, for the most part, respectful and yeah yeah kind to deal with during our time together. Yes, they are, and they're appreciative of yep. what we're doing for them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, is there any other new business? Uh, well, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, no, we haven't gotten to new business yet. Still on. Oh. We're we need to do the minutes. Right. Oh, sorry. I thought we were doing business. With, okay, got it. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes of April seventeen and May first? And I can only be on one of those. Oh, okay. Motion to approve the minutes for April seventeenth. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April seventeenth. Second. Uh, sorry. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. And Jennifer, do you have a motion? Yes, to I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 1st, 2024 meeting. A second. And Commissioner Yakovlev? <laughs> How old that would get real fast? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Khan. <laughs> Abstain, correct? Is that what that's the, right? Yep. Responses? Okay. That's right. And Commissioner Ewers. Uh yes. <laughs> so that definitely slows our flow. So keep it that does, in mind. Doesn't it? We've lost our flow. <laughs> Decision made. <laughs> All right. Well, at least we, we got to try it out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now new business. I have nothing. Oh, I thought you had something. <laughs> I was oh, getting no. a little nervous. <laughs> nope, I have nothing. All right, anybody else have any new business? 
But I guess we can just state officially while being recorded that the Iron Horse did receive their liquor license. Yes, yes I was going to say that. Had. Yes, the Iron Horse is ready to go. Amazing. Yeah, Annie, I'm sorry, but was there an, any information disclosed or did you it just appear in your email? How was it? Um, released? Did you hear? I don't know if you were here at the beginning, but um, they, I don't know, it's unclear if Eric or the parlor room had to put money in escrow for the Department of Revenue. And that's the only way that they would allow it to be approved. Got it. Yeah. It's it, it in the newspaper article made it sound like it said tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but I, I don't know who put that money up, but it got done. That's yeah. All that yeah. And last night we went to the show and it was it was so great to just beautiful and it was lively and everyone was having a great time and it's just feels really nice to have it back that's awesome yeah all right then i think we're done i'll make a motion to adjourn second um natasha yes helen yes and jennifer yes all right um, thank you update your zooms thank you <laughs> thank you all bye, bye.